In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front wheel bearing and hub on this Toyota 4Runner. Let's get started. Use a 21 millimeter socket, remove all six of your lug nuts, and then take the wheel off. They make a special tool to remove these, but if you don't have it, you can just use a screwdriver or a chisel, whatever you have. Basically, you want to get in this lip here, try to separate the cap from the hub because we need to remove the axle nut that's hidden behind it. There it is, that just popped off. At this point, once you've separated it on one side, try to work your tool around to hopefully break it free evenly. And uh, once you have enough of it broken free, you can start prying it gently. And switch to a pry bar. There we go. A lot of times these are kind of stuck in place. Take that off. Grab some cutters or whatever you have that fits in here. Sometimes needle nose pliers fit too. Just try to bend this cotter pin out of the way and then remove it. going to cut it. We're going to use a new one anyway. Always use a new cotter pin. Take that out. Take this locking cap off and then get a 36 millimeter socket and remove the axle nut. Shouldn't be too, too tight. Take this off. And now you want to make sure that the axle pushes through just like that. If it's seized, you can either take a rubber mallet or a punch and a hammer, punch it right in the center here and break it free because you're going to want this to be broken free off of the splines of the hub. Next, we have to take the bolt out that holds the brake hose in line to the knuckle because this is the only place where we can get some movement in the brake system here. So for me, it's going to be a 13 socket with a 13 wrench, but that's because this is just a random bolt that someone has put in here. For you, if it's still the original bolt, it's probably going to be a 12 millimeter. Take the nut off from the other side, set it aside, push the bolt out. This is free now. If you look right here, you'll see that the ABS wire is also clipped in. So with a pair of pliers, pinch this clip. That should allow it to free up. There we go. Pull it out, set this aside because the line will go with the caliper once we unbolt it. I have a bungee cord ready so that I can attach the caliper safely. Once we unbolt it, you don't want to just let it hang by the brake line or the brake hose. 17 millimeter socket, take off both of these bolts that hold the caliper onto the knuckle. Leave this one in a couple threads while you take off the top one so it can hold it for you. Take this one off completely, set it aside, take the bottom one off. Slide the caliper off, make sure the rotor doesn't fall. And then we'll hang it to the side over here with our bungee cord. Now take the rotor off. Ours is new, so it's not stuck on here. A lot of times these will get stuck, but of course, when you reuse the rotor, you don't want to hammer on the surface. So to break it free, if yours is stuck, just hammer in between the studs, but make sure you don't hit the studs. Next, we have to remove the ABS sensor from the knuckle. Ours might not come out. I'm going to give it a try, but if it doesn't, I'm going to have to unplug it from the other end. However, if it does come out, it'll be easier to take this out of here. 10 millimeter socket, remove this bolt. Try to be gentle with it if it's stuck. Try to work it back and forth and spray some rust penetrant because if this breaks in the knuckle, you're going to have to drill it out. Once you take this out, this is where we're going to have the, uh, the fight. Try, to not to, try not to crush this ABS sensor, but take some pliers and gently work it back and forth. If it does break free, I'm going to try and spray some penetrant in here to help it out. It's not the best idea to use a hammer on these because it could damage the sensor. 
So if you can get underneath it and slightly lift it up like this, that usually helps the penetrant work its way down there. Just like that, but don't go too far because you can snap this ear off. Okay, there we go. Now it's progress. Now take a pry bar underneath it and try to pry it up as you wiggle it back and forth. Don't pry too much because it will break. The plastic around it will get chiseled up a little, but that's okay. It's just the housing of the sensor, not the sensor itself. And there we go. The sensor itself is inside, it's safe. Obviously we're gonna clean this up before installation as well as the mounting hole, but the sensor is off, let's set it aside. If you follow the ABS wire up, you'll see that it clamps into this bracket. You can either unbolt it from up here, spread these two halves apart, and then take the whole bracket aside, or just unbend this like that, not too much, and pop it out, leave this bracket attached. A lot of times the bracket actually breaks up here, so I feel like this would be more efficient and less likely to break. Hang the sensor out of the way safely. Let's get the tie rod off. To do that, take the cotter pin off. That locks the castle nut in. This one must have been recently put in here because it's not super rusty. A lot of times they're seized. And if yours is seized, you can cut it flush, hammer a socket over it, take the nut off over the cotter pin. 19 millimeter socket. I'm gonna give this a little rust penetrant here so it can hopefully slide off a little easier. Okay, put the nut on a couple threads, take a hammer, hit the knuckle right here, that should break the tie rod free. Take this off, pull the tie rod away. Let's take the upper ball joint off of the control arm, remove the cotter pin. This one's old and rusty, so we most likely will have to break it off of here because it's gonna be stuck inside of the stud. We'll give it a couple taps, maybe it'll break free. Most likely, I'm gonna to have to cut it. Yeah, this just broke off, I didn't even cut it. So, having said that, let's hammer a socket on top of it. This is going to be a 19 millimeter in size. And the socket on. Put a big breaker bar on it. There we go. Okay, put it back on a couple threads so that we can break this free without the knuckle falling down uncontrollably. Leave that like that. Take a hammer, tap the control arm right here. There you go. We'll leave that like this. Now to remove the lower ball joint, you actually can just unbolt these four 14 millimeter bolts and it'll separate right here. The, the ball joint can stay attached to the lower control arm. Now you can take a pry bar. And there you go, pop it free. Lift the knuckle up, take off the upper ball joint nut. Once this is off, push the axle through and take the knuckle off. Let's remove this inner wheel seal now. Take a pry bar and a hammer and just tap it straight out. So I have the knuckle set up in the press here. The most important thing is that it's flat and even. You don't want this sitting crooked because the press will press sideways at that point and it's just gonna jam up and actually not press anything out. I have a 36 millimeter socket that fits perfectly in here. If you don't have this, which you already took the axle nut off, so most likely you do, uh, then you just use something else that fits in there. Make sure it doesn't press itself into the bearing. You wanna make it slide out with the hub. And then I'm just gonna use the spacer up here, to take up the extra slack. Okay, let's press down until the hub comes out the other side. 
This might take quite a bit of pressure, so just be aware of that. hub popped out. At the top here, you'll notice there is a spacer here. Take that out and then the ABS tone ring comes out, if you have ABS of course. Set those aside, remove the knuckle with the bearing which we'll have to press out in a second. But for now, just take all of this out. And this is what's left of our old hub seal, but no worries, we have some new ones to install. Now we have to take out the snap ring that goes around here. I'm going to spray a little bit of rust penetrant here. Hopefully that'll get in there and loosen it up. Then you need snap ring pliers and for this you gotta squeeze it in. This one's a little seized in there so at this point what I want to do is get a pry bar, small pry bar or a chisel or something that will be able to drive this in like this. We use a hammer, tap it, and the vibrations should break this free. I'm just going to heat up the knuckle just very slightly around here. Hopefully that'll break it free. I don't want to get it cherry red or anything. That'll weaken it too much. But a little bit of heat will actually help break the snap ring free. Just try to work it around. There we go. The snap ring is removed, so let's go back to the press and press this out. Whether your inner race or outer race popped out or not, that's fine. Um, if it did, just ignore that. The bearing actually will come out through the front. Now back at the press, I set it up the same exact way since the bearing also comes out through the front. I'm using this block of aluminum that will press the bearing out and I'm pressing on the race, but also make sure that whatever you're using fits loosely in here because obviously you don't want it to get stuck in the knuckle. So I centered it up. There you go, the bearing's out. I brought the knuckle back on my workbench so I can clean it up a little bit. Not so much on the outside, but in here, especially right where the snap ring rides. I'm gonna take a rag with a pick so I can scrape off any debris that is in here. It's important to do that because if you have sand or rust build up in here, the snap ring will not seat. And this is the only thing that locks in your wheel bearing. Obviously it's pressed in here, but this is the only safety measure you have. So you wanna make sure that this seat is clean if yours is severely corroded, you might want to scrape it with something, um, or if it's in really, really poor condition, well, unfortunately, you're just going to need a new knuckle. But most of the time, it will be just fine if you clean it up. Make sure you get in here, too, where the wheel bearing sits, so that as it gets pressed in, it doesn't stop on any rust, chunks, corrosion, buildup, anything like that. Degrease it with brake parts cleaner. Once you've done that, it's important to do the same thing to this spacer here and the ABS tone ring because as you can see, these have debris on them too and it's important that they are clean. Otherwise, a lot of this debris will not only be able to get into the wheel bearing, but it'll get stuck if it's rust chunks, it's magnetic, so it'll get stuck on the ABS sensor and then you'll have ABS issues. I 
I have the knuckle set up in my press here. The new wheel bearing will press in from the top, just like the old one came out through the top here. And you wanna make sure you have a flat surface to press on and even so that as you press the new wheel bearing in, the knuckle doesn't go sideways like that. Otherwise, you will be basically jamming it in, crooked into the knuckle, potentially damaging the wheel bearing or even the knuckle. Having said that, to install the new wheel bearing, you'll notice that it's not directional. It's identical on both sides. So it can go in in either direction, does not matter. Make sure that's sitting flat in there. You don't wanna press on the inner race here. That will damage the roller bearings. I wiped this off a little bit. Put that in. I'm using this spacer just to take up the extra distance here. Make sure it's perfectly centered in the press. Once it is, Let's start applying some pressure and it should go down nice and smooth. As it's going down, make sure you pay attention so that it's actually going straight. If for some reason it's going at an angle, stop and resituate your setup here. That just bottomed out right there. I'm gonna give it one more pump to put some extra pressure on it to make sure that it is perfectly seated all the way around. Now let go of the press, release pressure. Take this out. And now we can put in our snap ring. I have my snap ring here. I'm gonna start it in on one side or you could use your snap ring pliers, but sometimes it's just as easy to do this. Grab it here and slide it in. Give it a couple taps to make sure it's seated. When you do this, obviously make sure you don't jam your tool, whether it's a pry bar or anything else that you're using right into the seal here. Couple very gentle taps, we'll definitely seat it if it isn't already. Make sure the surface is somewhat clean and doesn't have a lot of rot buildup for the new seal to um, go on here. Now, take this new seal and try to start it as flat as possible and just tap it on. However, when you tap it, don't tap on the rubber part. Try to get the metal sleeve, go at an angle like this. It's time to press the hub back into the bearing and the knuckle. I have a new hub, but even if you had your old one and you wanted to reuse it, you'd be doing the same thing. When you press the hub in, you wanna support the inner race on the backside, otherwise you run the risk of separating this bearing. As we start applying pressure and pressing this down, you wanna make sure that this hub or the bearing still spins. If it starts binding up, that means the hub is going in at an angle and that is not good. That means you'll lock up the bearing. You need to stop, resituate the press or the knuckle and uh, try again. Oh, that just bottomed out right there. Now let's get these two pieces pressed in. The ABS tone ring slides right on. However, what locks it in is this right here. And you can either tap it on with a hammer at this point, but I'm on the press, so I might as well just press it on really quick. Okay, here we go. This shouldn't take a lot of force. That's it, that just went on. I'll give it an extra squeeze, there we go. Don't crush it down too much because you will be pressing into the inner race and the inner seal of the wheel bearing if you go too far. Now let's get the new seal installed. Now let's put this seal in. Before you put the seal in, make sure that this surface here is clean. So it's not gonna drop down in right away. You're gonna have to seat it slightly. Be very gentle because you don't wanna bend this part out. What I'm gonna do is once I tap it slightly with a hammer, I'm gonna take a flat punch and go on this inner lip here. This is gonna have a lot more um, surface area to press down than this. And you wanna pay special attention to not accidentally hit the rubber part of the seal because that will damage it and you'll need a new one. Now 
That's seated perfectly. I went around a couple times to make sure that it's even on all sides. So now let's go put this in the vehicle. Now let's get the knuckle back onto the vehicle, put the ball joint through, put the nut on, press it in as much as you can and drive the nut down. Of course, we're gonna snug it up and torque it to 80 foot pounds. That's 80 right there. However, if the cotter pin slot does not line up with the hole on the stud, always tighten it to line it up and not loosen. Once that's lined up, put the cotter pin in and then we'll bend it over to lock it in. I like to add anises to the splines of the axle before it goes into the bearing or the hub, I should say. Don't apply too much, just a light coating. This will prevent the axle from seizing in there over time. That should be good. Now take the axle, pull the knuckle away, slide it into the knuckle. If it doesn't want to quite seat, just move it around and turn it so that the splines line up and make sure it goes in all the way. You should see most of the threads sticking out through the front. And now let's get the knuckle on the lower ball joint. Now you want to just pull down on the knuckle, try to line up the ball joint the best you can. I'm going to slide this bolt through, try to get it started. Just make sure it doesn't cross thread, of course. Okay, that one started just one or two threads, but that's enough to hold it here. Now let's start a second one. We'll do this other front one. Perfect, this one started as well. Make sure they're going in smoothly. Let's put the two rears in and then we'll snug them all up. With the two fronts lined up, the rears are more likely to be already lined up. And now when I tighten them up, I'm gonna go in a cross pattern. That way the knuckle and the ball joint can seat perfectly together. Okay, let's torque them. 59 foot-pounds for all four of these bolts. Let's put the tie rod back in. Put the castle nut back on, snug it up, and torque it to 67 foot-pounds. Make sure the cotter pin slot lines up. If it doesn't, continue tightening and not loosening to, to get it to line up. Slide your cotter pin through, and of course, bend it over to lock it in. Let's get the ABS sensor in. I like to put a little bit of silicone paste right where the O-ring goes. This will not only help it seal up, but it'll allow it to slide in a lot easier. If the mounting hole is severely corroded and has a lot of rust buildup, clean it up, maybe with some sandpaper or anything that you have, scrape it off. As you can see, this goes in nice and smooth. That's how it should be. Start the bolt in, snug it up. Don't tighten it too much, you don't wanna break it. Let's put the ABS wire back in here and squeeze this back down. Put the axle nut on, snug it up and torque it to 174 foot-pounds. There we go, that's bottomed out. I have a pry bar going across the lug studs. Make sure it's flat, that way it doesn't damage the threads and it's holding the hub in place. Again, 174 foot-pounds. Perfect, right there. Take this out. 
Now put this little cap back on, make sure it lines up with the two holes for the cotter pin. If it doesn't, you can just spin it around to different slots until it does. Use a new cotter pin, slide it through, and then we'll bend it over to lock it in. Let's put this cap back on. I like to put a little bit of grease. I'm using silicone paste, but you can use whatever grease you have or RTV, and this will not only allow it to slide on a lot easier, but it'll seal up perfectly and it will prevent water from making its way in there. Slide it on, try to get it as even as possible, and then take a rubber mallet, not a steel hammer, because it'll damage the surface and tap it in until it bottoms out. Of course, as you do this, pay attention to your lug studs, don't hit them. Let's put anti-seize on the hub surface, that way the rotor doesn't seize on it. A thin layer will do the trick. If you put too much, it'll actually start flinging out on the rotor as you drive, and that is not what you want. And of course, also get into the center here, right where that rotor sits and mounts. That's another area where it's more, more likely to seize up. Perfect. It's time to put the rotor on. I have a new rotor, but if you don't, check this mating surface here to make sure there's no raised areas from rust buildup. If there are, sand them down to make it flat. If you put an uneven surface on here, you'll have braking issues in the future. Slide this on, and I'm going to put a lug nut on so it can hold the rotor on for me, otherwise it's going to want to keep falling off. Just thread it on by hand, bottom it out. Let's get the brake caliper back on, make sure the pads are pushed out as much as they can be so they're out of the way of the rotor. Slide it on, line up the two bolt holes and start the two bolts in. We'll bottom these out and then torque them. 90 foot pounds is the torque for both of these bolts. That's one. And two. Let's reconnect the ABS wire to this bracket. And now re-secure the bracket to the knuckle, put this bolt in. I have a nut that goes on the other side. I'm going to hold the nut with a 13 and tighten the bolt. Again, for you, it's probably not going to be a 13 millimeter. Now let's put the wheel on. Put on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 76 foot-pounds. After finishing this repair, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.